we worship this evening according to the common service on page 15 in the front of the hymnal following the communion liturgy in its entirety. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. be with you. Let us pray. Eternal Father, before whom all generations rise and fall, teach us to think earnestly on the brevity of our lives and on the immensity of your goodness. Help us to enter the new year trusting in the name of your Son and walking in the way of his peace through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson for this festival of New Year's Eve from the 29th chapter of the prophet Jeremiah, beginning at verse 10. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. 
Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. So far the Old Testament lesson. Our psalm of the day, these words of Psalm 90. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. So far the psalm of the day. And our epistle lesson from Romans chapter 8 begins at verse 28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. This is the word of the Lord. Sanctify us through thy truth, O Lord. Thy word is truth. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel is written in the 17th chapter according to St. John, beginning at the 20th verse. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us join in praying the ancient litany of the church as it is found printed in your service folder, the congregation speaking the words in bold type. The congregation may be seated. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. from all sin, from all error, from all evil, Good Lord, us. from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and rebellion, from lightning and tempest all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death. Good Lord, us. By the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation, by thine agony and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, in all time of tribulation, in all time of prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment. We poor sinners do beseech thee, to hear us, Lord. and to rule and govern thy holy Christian church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of thy church in the true knowledge and understanding of thy word, and in holiness of life, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into thy harvest, to accompany thy word with thy spirit and grace, to raise up them that fall, and to strengthen such as do stand, and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed. 
to give all nations peace and concord, to preserve our country from discord and contention, to give our nation perpetual victory over all its enemies, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, and to bless and keep our magistrates and all our people. To behold and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. To protect all who travel by land, water, or air. To preserve all women in the perils of childbirth. To strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children. To set free all who are innocently imprisoned. To defend and provide for all fatherless children and widows. And to have mercy on all people. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. To give and preserve to our use the fruits of the earth, and graciously hear our prayers. We to hear us, o Lord. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us, and grant us peace. Amen. We sing the next hymn. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Our text on this final evening of 2010, from the 29th chapter of the prophet Jeremiah, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. So how are your plans turning out? Are you where you thought you would be a year ago? 
five, ten, fifty years ago? We joke about not buying green bananas because we don't know if we'll be around long enough when they turn ripe. But behind the humor, of course, is the sad fact that our fondest dreams for the future may not come to pass. Our dearest dreams may get derailed. And the things that we had truly hoped for and planned on may never happen. It must have seemed that way also to the people in the land of Judah carried away into captivity by the Babylonians. None of them had ever really planned that it would go that far. It isn't that God had not warned the wayward nation about what was coming. His prophets had warned the otherwise wayward nation, faithless prophets and priests, a nation of prodigals of what was going to happen. And then some of them who had been shoving their fist in God's face for generations had the gall to act surprised that now the famed temple of Solomon is a smoldering ruin the walls of Jerusalem a pile of rubble and the ivy leaguers of the nation dragged off in chains to Babylon surprised this is what God had foretold others among them who had kept the will and word of their God they became what people call collateral damage swept up in the tide of events they could not control carried away by these events they simply had to trust that somehow God would make sense of it all someday so here they all are in far off Babylon asking now what? there were grinning false prophets among them who told them not to worry that they would just have to just put up with a few weeks or months in your pup tents and then you'll be able to go home again and pick up where you left off like all false prophets they told the people what they wanted to hear amid all of this the prophet Jeremiah sends a letter to those exiles in Babylon and he tells them this is going to last a long time this captivity is going to last a full 70 years. Only the youngest among you will live long enough to go back and rebuild the temple and the walls of Jerusalem. So get used to living in Babylon. Show your faith by humbly submitting now to the clearly revealed will of your God. Settle down, build houses, plant crops, marry other believers, have children so that there will be more believers. Increase in the land, says the prophet. Do not decrease. Pray for the peace and prosperity of the government under which you now live, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. And says the Lord, when the 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and I will graciously fulfill my promise to bring you back to your own land. It wasn't what they had planned. It must have been a bitter pill to swallow that they had to sit there for 70 years in a foreign land. God doesn't forbid our every plan. 
We all make plans. It wasn't raining when Noah built the ark. We try to make sensible plans about house payments, education savings. We make plans for our children. We don't begin preparing the children for the Christmas Eve service on Christmas Eve. Sermon preparation doesn't begin at 8 a.m. on Sunday. There are sensible preparations that you and I make from health care to education. It's just that our plans are not always God's plans. And to this people who feel that their plans have been derailed, and it seems like, you know, there's no sense or rhyme or reason at all to life. God says, listen, I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. This is true. God has a plan for your life and mine. But often when that plan is different from yours and mine, we find ourselves giving way to disappointment. Mother Eve was delighted when she first held in her arms a child. She named the boy Cain, as in acquired or gotten, as in I got him, thinking that the child nursing at her breast was doubtless the promised Messiah. When it became clear that it was going to take a lot longer than that for a savior to come into the world, she named her second boy Abel. Breath, vapor, vanity, disappointment. Job was a righteous man. He abhorred evil, feared God, taught his children to do the same. How could he have guessed that his whole life would have fallen to pieces in one catastrophe after another, health, wealth, children, all gone, swept away like a feather in the wind? Disappointment. Abraham planned on spending his golden years raising this son God had given him. A son through whom Christ would come. He certainly did not plan that the greatest test of his faith would come not in the prime of life, but in the evening of his years. When God wanted that son back again. Disappointment. Mary and Martha, they had a brother named Lazarus. He took ill. They sent for Jesus. Jesus had healed countless others. And they planned that Jesus would certainly arrive on time to do the same for Lazarus. The Bible says Jesus loved Lazarus. And that, therefore, therefore, he delayed intentionally on purpose. Lazarus died. And when Jesus finally got there, Mary and Martha each in turn expressed to Jesus their disappointment. Lord, if thou hadst been here, our brother had not died. Disappointment. Two disciples trudging down the road to Emmaus in the waning hours of Easter evening to meet up with a stranger. There on the road where they pour out their heart to him about all the things that had been going on. About Jesus, the prophet, mighty and word and deed before God and all the people. And how he had been slain by his own people. And what is more, this is the third day. And some of our women amazed us and told us they found the tomb empty, but we didn't see him. And we had hoped 
they say. We had hoped in the past tense of their disappointment. We had hoped that it should have been he which would have redeemed Israel. Disappointment. You and I, we identify. We harbor in our hearts and our heads pleasant plans for the future. We stake perhaps everything on something that we want God to do for us, and certainly God has the power to do it, and certainly God loves us. <clears throat> and so we expect, plan, recovery from an illness, the birth of a healthy child, or promotion at work or finally that our wayward child will turn out all right and then the baby's born with disabilities the illness does not go away despite our prayers our name is posted down at the shop, the list of layoffs, and our kid seems to jump out of the frying pan into the fire, and there we sit, wondering when Jesus is going to come down that road to help us. And to people like you and me who live in a world of disappointment, God says, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. We know God says things like that, but there's a part of us, the sinful nature that clings to our bones till the day we die, that doesn't always buy it. You know, St. Paul said similar things. We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. And we sing hymns like, what God ordains is always good. And we have a hard time believing that sometimes. That God has a plan for our life. It's kind of, it's kind of like that, that nurse when you were little who comes in with that needle about as big as a horse's leg. And says, don't worry, this won't hurt a bit. We've been hurt plenty. And we want to know how all of these disasters in our lives figure into God's plans. Or how they promise any kind of hope or any kind of future. And why they all seem to lead to disappointment. But God has a plan. You remember, don't you? From eternity, God planned to send his one and only Son into the world that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God kept that plan and fulfilled it in time as his Son gathered up all of the disappointment and the sin into one big heap and carried it away to a cross and then left it in his tomb and walked out of the grave on Easter placing his foot on the neck of the last enemy plan work. God has a plan for you and me individually from eternity. He knew you, loved you, and determined that you would be his. And in time, God fulfilled it, didn't he? Through the gospel and word and sacraments, he brought you to faith enlightened the eyes of your heart to see what you could not see on your own. Christ Jesus as your only Savior. And he promised you also not just salvation now and forgiveness, but an eternal future. 
And you say, well, how sure is that plan? Listen to St. Paul. You heard it. Those he predestined, way back in eternity, those he predestined, he also called to faith. Those he called, he also justified, declares you not guilty. Those he justified, he also glorified. Glorified. Past tense. His plan for you to get home, to be delivered from your captivity, to sin, death, and hell, to get you out of there and get you home. Is that certain that God can talk about it as though you had already arrived? Whatever plans of yours got derailed, whatever disappointments have come your way, God's plan for you will never fail. And God will never disappoint. You remember now, don't you? Eve called him Abel. Disappointment, but it wasn't Abel that turned out to be the disappointment. And the Bible says, Abel being dead by faith still speaks. And Job, well, the book of James says, you have seen what the Lord brought about. Now the Lord restored to Job twice over all that he had lost. And Abraham... Well, on that mountain, God stayed the hand that held the knife. And Abraham got his boy back. You remember his name? Isaac? Laughter? I'll bet they laughed and laughed all the way back down that mountain. And Lazarus. Well, that the glory of God might be made manifest. Lazarus comes forth from the grave at the very call of Christ. And those two men on the road who met up with the stranger, we had hoped, they said, in their bottomless disappointment. Well, their eyes were opened. And they saw who it was that was talking to. And now they knew. And now they understood. God never disappoints. His plans do not fail. So let us enter this new year. Whatever our own plans, knowing that his plan will never, 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 fail. A blessed new year to you all. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.
Let us offer up our prayers this evening for Richard Japieski, who is now returned home from the hospital, and for Charlotte Paff, who will undergo surgery on Wednesday at Gunderson Lutheran. We pray, O oh Lord, you are the great physician of soul and body. You chasten and you heal. We pray that you would look with mercy on your servants and restore their strength. You gave your son to bear our infirmities and sicknesses. Deal compassionately with your servants and bless the medical means employed on their behalf with your healing power. We commit them to your gracious mercy and protection as to a faithful and merciful God for Jesus' sake. Amen. And we also pray, Lord God, Heavenly Father, from whom cometh down every good and perfect gift, we thank thee that in the past year thou hast granted unto us thy gracious protection, given us health and daily bread, crowned us with thy blessing, and defended thy holy Christian church from harm and danger. We beseech thee, let us in a manner acceptable to thee, conclude the old year and enter upon the new, in which thou wouldst be pleased to dwell among us continually with thy goodness, for the sake of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us continue with the communion portion of the service, beginning on page 21 in the front of the hymnal. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord. Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For in the wonder and mystery of his birth, you have opened our eyes to the glory of your grace and renewed in our hearts the fervor of your love. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Savior Jesus, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen.
Let us continue with the Song of Simeon on page 24. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this holy supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace.
Good evening. We welcome our visitors and invite you to sign the guest register. An email reminder was sent out uh, uh, today that the diorama takedown at Riverside Park begins tomorrow at 9 a.m. And if anyone who wishes to come and help out with that, it will certainly be appreciated. And please pass the word. We wish a blessed new year to all of you. Please greet each other. Thank you. 